everyone, we're taking a little step back in time for the start of this video. You may recall that in a previous video, the one where I was changing the interior structure of my doll's house, I removed this piece of black card and I uncovered this little fireplace and I was delighted because my plan was to cut into this chimney to create a fireplace just like this. So in today's video, I'm going to show you what I've done to this fireplace since. So. First of all, I took this little black bit off. This was here because there was a little Arga fireplace up against this wall when I first got the doll's house. I've passed that on to my mum because that wouldn't really be in keeping with the Tudor era. And I'm going to turn this into a little fire where the food will cook and I'll have little pots maybe hanging from it. So first of all, I removed this glue. So obviously I'm using a knife here directing it away from me. If you are using a knife, please be careful. Don't copy what I do because I don't know if I'm doing it in the safest way. I filled this little hole with polyfiller because I don't want the hole anymore. So obviously I needed to hide it. And this is just ready, uh, ready mix polyfiller that started as a powder. I found that to be a lot better than the, than the polyfiller that you get in tubes. So there's the powder there. And I mixed it up and popped it in. This is the consistency, just to show you. And then once I'd done that hole, I saved the remainder of this polyfiller and mixed some yellow ochre into it. So this is just yellow ochre, a little bit of acrylic paint, and I wanted to make it the same colour as the stonework that I've used for my windows, which will be going up in a separate video. So, I built around the fireplace. I wanted a fireplace that had more of an arch to it, and I wanted stone around the fireplace to make it more in keeping with how it would have been during the Tudor era. So I built the polyfiller around the fireplace, so I used the hole that was already there, I didn't make the hole any bigger or change the whole, sh whole shape, but I did use the polyfiller to try and give the illusion of a bit more of an arch around the fireplace. So I built the polyfiller up and gradually layered it until I had the shape that I wanted. Once I felt that the polyfiller had been laid to a thick enough depth, I then used the palette knife to smooth around the edges and to turn it more into the shape that I wanted. So you can see here that I'm trying to smooth off the top and to take away any excess to make it into more of the Tudor art shape. I also did the same inside the fireplace to make that art shape and any bits that I felt were still missing, I added a bit more and then reshaped them. Ideally, I would have liked it if my fireplace had been a little bit wider and bigger for this kitchen, but I obviously was restricted by how much chimney space was behind and I didn't want to make many more alterations because I'd already changed the structure of the house quite a lot. And if I'd, have, if I'd have expanded the hole for this fireplace, it would have meant also altering the skirting boards that are running around and things like that. So I decided to just try and create the best shape that I could using this method. Here I'm just using a little touch of water on the back of my spatula just to smooth off because some parts were a little bit lumpy and then I left the fireplace to dry. This is the fireplace once it was dry. I'm just shining a light on it which is why it might look a little bit of a different colour from the last um, clip. But now I'm just going to try and carve out of it and shape it using the craft knife. Now obviously I'm being really careful here because I don't want to slip with this knife and what I'm doing is just trying to shape the edges and make it look as if it's been made out of real stone that a stonemason might have worked on. So I'm also going to cut little um, sort of creases between the stones to make it look as if it's been built up with different pieces of stone. The alcove to the chimney breast actually has a hole, a gap at the bottom, so it's not solid. So I'm also going to use this plywood to make a little half area and base to the fireplace so that I can start to build the fire up on top of it. And on top of this, I will also be making brickwork or stonework, which I'll show you later in this video. Obviously, I'm using my craft knife here to cut out this plywood. It's quite thin wood, so it cuts quite easily, but I'm making sure that I'm cutting away from myself and keeping my fingers out of the way and then I'm just giving it a quick sand to get rid of any rough edges. Before building up the stonework onto this piece I thought I'd test it out for size and I'm glad I did because it was a little bit too big and the reason for this was because I measured inside the alcove but obviously I'd built the stonework up around so I needed to reduce the size a bit to get it through the gap. 
So once I trimmed it down a bit, it was nice and snug and fit perfectly, but there was still one problem and that was that the area behind, so where the alcove is, dips down a bit. So I needed to raise the back of this piece of plywood so that it doesn't sort of sink as it goes in. So I attached two pieces of scrap plywood to the base at the back, which won't be seen when it's inside. And now it's time to build up the stonework or the brickwork. First I painted a base coat, this is just the wheatgrass wall paint that I'd used for the walls of the doll's house and I'm putting this on just so that if there's any cracks or any visibility through the brickwork or stonework that I'm going to do, I want it to be consistent with the rest of the house, I don't want to be able to see the plywood. Now I'm just mixing up some polyfiller, um, I'm doing it in just a little recycled pot, it's got paint all around the edges but that's okay because even if that gets into the polyfiller I'm going to be painting this afterwards. So I'm doing a couple of spoonfuls of polyfiller mixed with a little bit of water to make it up to a consistency that I want. I'm smoothing my filler onto this little hearth area that I've made out of my plywood, ready to scrape in the brick patterns. So I'm just going to scrape away where the bricks would be and this is using exactly the same technique that I used for the brickwork up my chimney breasts which I will attach a little link to the video at the top of this video if I can work out how to do it. So I'm just going to scar away, I'm going to have some vertically laid bricks across the half at the front here and then I'm going to have a go at a bit of a herringbone pattern at the back where the fire will sit. Once this is dry I will paint it up like brickwork and whilst this is drying I'm going to use the remaining polyfiller to go and do the same brick patterns in the back of the chimney breast in the alcove. So I'm just using the kebab skewer to scrape away here and I'm starting in the middle sections that are most visible to make sure that they are the neatest sections. For the part of the alcove that you can't see, I'm going to have to use a little mirror to see around the corner and try my best with that bit. And then when this is finished, it is time to wait for it to dry so that I can start painting it. So once the hearth and the brickwork in the fireplace were dry, I just used some ready mix poster paint, the same one that I used when I painted the brickwork for the chimneys and I did a base coat on both the hearth and the inside of the chimney, making sure that I got into all of the nooks and crannies to hide any of the white polyfiller. Once they were dry I slotted the hearth into place and then I started working on the stonework around the fireplace by using soft pastels to add a bit of colour. So I used some browns and some blacks to try and give a smudgy effect and this is the same technique that I used on the little oven at the back that you can see in a different video. The brickwork at the back wasn't quite dry so I couldn't do the pastels right now so I went away and started on the floor. You can see that in the flooring video, obviously it's half finished here. But when it had dried I came back and I started to paint into the brickwork and onto the stone in a dark raw umber colour and I didn't use black because I found that the raw umber was dark enough and I wanted to replicate the soot that would be found at the back of the fireplace. Once the flooring was a bit further on I used my black soft pastel to add some smudginess to the flooring around the fireplace. I also made these little bits of charcoal which 
which I can put in a different video if you'd like to see them. I've not stuck them down into the fireplace yet because I don't know what to stick them with because I don't want to be able to see the glue. And I'm also thinking of maybe adding some lighting into the fireplace. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you've got any suggestions, please do tell me. So this is the finished fireplace for now until I add its little embellishments. Thank you for watching. Please watch the other videos and I hope you've enjoyed it.